What's going on DMG clan? Today I'm going to show you how to root your Odin 1 Pro in 2024. So let's level up our gaming knowledge and learn some more. Alright mobile gamers, so the very first step is to download the files in the link in the description below. The zip file is called Odin 1 Pro Rooting. Now I've compiled everything you need inside of this zip folder for you to get started. So once you've downloaded it, just extract all the files into your downloads directory like I'm going to do right now. So extract everything here. Now you're going to have four more files within there, which are more zip files. So you can extract all of these zip files within this Odin 1 Pro rooting folder to just keep it all clean and simple. So just right click, extract all, and do this for every one of these files. Now, once you have all of those extracted correctly and all the files are accessible in each one of these folders, what you can do to save on space is just delete all those zip files like I'm going to do right now, so that now we have our folders within our Odin 1 Pro, Ro Pro rooting folder so that we can actually start the rooting process. So the next thing we need to do is we need to open up QPS tools. Now, this has two different tools in here. It has a driver. So this Qualcomm driver is very important. Now we can also install this a different way, which I'm going to show you. And we have the QP, QPST tool, which is our tool that we're gonna be using to actually flash and rip the original image file from our Odin 1 Pro. Now the Odin 1 Pro that you see here is currently on the latest build, which is the M2 model of the 224. Now this is the M2 model. The M1 model or the M model, the one that doesn't actually have a model number, should work the same way. It has all the same boot drives and everything. It just has a different screen. Now the M2 model is what we're working with today, just so that you know the M2 model had a different screen. I think different buttons, if I remember correctly. Otherwise, we're gonna start with installing this QPST tool. Now my screen's gonna go black for a second. All it does is show up a dialog window that says click yes or no, which I'm going to click yes on. And now it's going to show up the installation shield wizard. Next, we're going to follow the prompt. So click next, click I accept, click next again, click next again, and then just put it wherever you want, obviously, in your destination folder. Now I'm going to do the complete setup, click next, click install, and let it do its thing, and click finish. Now, we're gonna go back out. Now these are important rooting apps that we're gonna copy over to our Odin 1 Pro. These apps are the Magisk app, which is our main flashing tool to patch the actual image file. We have Root Checker and Root Explorer, which is a Root Explorer application to actually see all the files that you can normally not see or actually change in a non-rooted device. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to plug our Odin 1 into the computer. I'm using the original AYN or an original AYN uh, USB cord. Now, not every USB cord is going to work for this. You have to make sure you have a good USB cord. The one that's originally from the device, for example, works really well or any other devices. Now, when you get the use USB for dialog window, click file transfer. Now, if your computer doesn't show your device, you can go to device manager. Now I'm within device manager here. And as you can see, it has a little triangle icon and that's because the driver didn't install correctly. Now I have a setting on my computer that doesn't allow new drivers to be updated or installed automatically. I have this for a specific reason. So I'm going to have to update this driver, click browse for my computer. Let me pick, go to MTP USB device, click next. Now I'll be able to actually access my device. A little dialog window will pop at the bottom of my screen. It's on my other screen right now to allow me to see my internal folders on my device. Now, what we're going to do in here, I'm going to go into my internal storage. I'm going to create a new folder inside my internal storage of my Odin 2 called root apps. And then I'm going to copy. I'm going to put these two windows side by side, just like this and then paste these files in here. Once those files are pasted, the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to enable what is called a developer mode on our Odin 1 Pro. So open it up. Now go to your settings, go all the way down to about Odin. 
Go all the way down to build number. Tap on that build number multiple times until you see you are now a developer. Click back, go to system. Click the drop down arrow where it says advanced. Now you'll see developer options. Now scroll down until you see USB debugging. Turn that on. Click OK. Now, sometimes the dialog window will pop up here. And if it doesn't, I will show you how to actually enable that. So I'm going to click cancel so you can see how to enable that. Click the home icon. So if that little window doesn't pop up on your device, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our Odin One Pro routing. We're going to go into the Android platform tools. Now, somewhere in a blank spot right here, you're going to right click. Make sure nothing's highlighted here. Like if that's highlighted, just click out of it. Hold down the shift on your keyboard and then right click and then open PowerShell window here. Now this PowerShell window is going to open up. We're going to type in dot forward slash ADB kill server. Now look at your device. We're going to type in dot forward slash ADB start server. And now your device is going to pop up with that little dialog window. If it doesn't, that means that your USB connection is not good or your device USB doesn't support this. But most newer USB devices actually or USB boards do support this. So click the checkbox to say always allow from this computer and click allow. And now to test that we actually have connection, we can go ADB devices. And it's going to put a question mark most likely because it's not going to be able to read that device. But if we go ADB reboot, this is going to reboot our device and we'll be able to do ADB commands with our computer. Now that that's rebooted, you saw that I was clicking the file manager section there. We are actually going to reboot this into uh, bootloader mode. And then we're going to boot it into an EDL mode, which is an emergency downloader mode. So we're going to type in our command line here adb reboot bootloader and then watch your device it'll boot right into what is called a bootloader mode and you'll see a bunch of text on screen like you see here now using your up and down keys on your volume rocker right here you're going to go volume up up which is plus and you're going to see a mode called emergency mode now the first thing we're going to do before we go into that emergency mode is we're going to type in dot forward slash fastboot get var var current dash slot. Now this is going to tell us a very important thing that we actually need to note because we're going to be flashing our custom patched image to slot B. So that's what my slot is. If yours says A, then you need to make sure you flash it to A. Another thing we're going to do is go fastboot get var so dot forward slash fastboot all now what this is telling us is showing us all of our partition slots and all of our partition uh, files and image files on here now the very important one that we want to look for is called boot underscore b now if yours like i said it's called boot a that's a very important aspect of knowing what we're going to be doing in a few seconds here so there it is right there so boot underscore B, you could have a little notepad open if you want to, but it's pretty straightforward and straight explanatory. That's the main boot image of your operating system on Android. And that's what we're going to be editing today. So mine says boot B, yours, there will be a boot A as well, or a boot B, but that's okay. I will show you how to do that in the next steps. So now I'm going to click clear or type in clear so that we can get out of all that. Now that we know what boot image we're looking at, because my slot is B, we're going to click the power button when we're selected on emergency mode. And now your screen is just going to go black. Now be careful with your cord. Don't wiggle it. If your cord is bad or something and it pops out, it's not going to break it. It's just when we do the next step, it won't grab the image file or read correctly like it's supposed to. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to device manager again. I'm going to drag this over here and go to com ports. Now this one sometimes loads. So I'm going to go to update driver for a second. This is the Qualcomm port that we're going to be looking at today. Browse for computer. Let me pick. If yours loads QECTEL, QD loader, that means that it's the wrong driver. So just do those steps that I just did there and install the Qualcomm one. So I can just click next again. And now the Qualcomm driver is installed correctly. 
The next thing you should do after you've done that is reboot your device and then redo those steps to go back into EDL mode. Sometimes it doesn't need this when we do the next step here. Sometimes you do need to do this. It's not a necessary step. You'll know if it didn't work properly or didn't go into that EDL mode properly by this next step I'm gonna show you. So the next step we're going to do is actually rip the boot image right off of our device. So we're gonna open up our little search icon, clicking the Windows icon, we're gonna type in Qfil, Q-F-I-L, and you'll see this app right here. I'm gonna right click on it and click run as administrator. Now you don't technically need to run it as administrator, but I just wanna make sure that everything runs properly. And now a little user control window will pop up that says yes or no, click yes. And now this applications or programs actually gonna show up. Now, very important step, click flat build as your checkbox, go to configuration, go to Firehose configuration. Now another little window is gonna pop up. In this device type dropdown, we need to select UFS. And then in this checkbox that says reset after download, make sure that that's checked off. Make sure Sahara is checked, which it should be. It shouldn't be set to anything else. No validation, all this other stuff. Just make sure your screen looks like this. Click OK. And now we're ready to grab our image file. So click on browse, go into your downloads. Go to that Odin one pro, pro, le, Odin one pro root tool section. Now you're going to go into the file folders that says QFill files, Odin One Pro. You're going to grab this program firehouse DDR elf file and click open. Now you're going to go load XML. You should be still inside of that QFill files, Odin One Pro. Highlight all of these files right here and click open. Highlight all of these files right here and click open. Now don't click download or anything. There shouldn't be anything to download in there anyways because we don't have any image files. But now we are loaded into the device's internal kernel memory. The next thing we need to do is go to select port. Now another little window is gonna pop up. Now you're gonna see Qualcomm HS-USB Q loader. If you don't see that and you see that QDEL loader, that's the wrong port. So you need to make sure the Qualcomm one is actually installed. Click OK. Now go to tools. Go to Partition Manager. Now another little dialog will pop up. Click OK. So as you can see, my device didn't actually load. Uh, the download failed. And that's because I updated my driver. So what we're going to do is we're going to unplug our device from our computer. We're going to hold down the power button. You're going to hold it down for at least 10 seconds or so until the device just boots back up. And there it is. I think that was about 15 seconds total. So now that's booted back up, we can plug this in. Now we can boot into EDL mode a different way, which is what I'm going to show you. So click file transfer. We're going to go back into our PowerShell window. And what we're going to do is we're going to go dot forward slash ADB reboot EDL. Just like so. Click enter and let it reboot. Now open up Q file. Now the port should automatically select like you see here. Now we can go to tools. We can go to partition manager. We can click OK, and now we should be able to actually wait and see that it's running. So this means that we have successfully ran this perfectly fine. Now another little dialog window will pop up just like so. Now we're going to scroll all the way down until we see boot. Boot underscore B is what image I am going to be grabbing. If yours was on slot A, then you're going to be grabbing the slot A. So there should be a boot A image as well for me as well. So there it is right there, but I don't need that. I only need the boot B and there it is. So right click on the boot B. Now click on manage partition data. Now you're going to click on read data. Now at the bottom here, it's going to tell you where that file is located. It's located in my users. I'm new, which is my name, app data, roaming, Qualcomm, Q file, com port six, read data dot bin location. So what I'm gonna do is go into my file manager. I'm gonna open up a new tab. I'm going to go to my OS. I'm going to go to users. My desktop name is I'm new. I'm going to go to app data. Now, if that app data doesn't show, we're going to go to the view. We're going to go to show. We're going to go show hidden items. Make sure that that's checked off so that we can see that app data folder. Double click into it. Go to roaming. Go to Qualcomm. QFill. COM port 6. And that is your original boot image. Now, right click on it. Click the rename icon and then rename this to boot A 
Odin one pro backup. You can name this whatever you'd like. So as long as you know what it is, you're going to copy that. Now you're going to go to your root Odin two or root Odin one folder and paste it in there. Now we're going to go back to Q file. We're going to close this out. We're going to close this out. Now a little dialog window is going to pop up again. It says phone will reset after it's done. So click OK. And all this is doing is just rebooting out of EDL mode. Now, if your device doesn't boot out of EDL mode correctly, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it does for the Odin One Pro. All you have to do is unplug the USB cord, hold down the power button again for about 15 seconds. All right, now that it's booted into our main screen on our Odin One, we're going to plug it back in. Go to file transfer and now we're going to navigate back to our odin one pro rooting folder we're going to grab that boot a image we're going to go over to our odin one since it's not showing up i'm going to go to my device manager again i'm going to update my pd or mtp update browse let me pick mtp usb device click next click close now my odin 2 is showing up internal storage i'm going to just paste this into the root directory of my device you can put it in your documents folder if you want or whatever you want to do but so as long as you know where it is so i'm just pasting this into here now that that's done i'm going to unplug this from my computer i'm going to go into my files on my odin one pro i'm going to go to my odin m2 i'm going to go to my root apps i'm going to install magisk i'm going to click continue i'm going to click install I'm going to click open. I'm going to click install. I'm going to click allow. Now I'm going to click next. I'm going to select patched image. Click the three lines. Go to my Odin M2. I'm going to grab that boot image. I'm going to click let's go and let it patch the image. All right. Now that that image is patched, I'm going to click home. I'm going to go back to my file manager. I'm going to install root checker pro continue click install now this is just going to show you that this device isn't rooted yet click agree click ok click verify root root access is not properly installed on this device which is great because we haven't rooted it yet now we're going to plug this back into our computer gain file access by clicking the file transfer we're going to go back into our odin 2 internal storage into the downloads directory we're going to grab that image, which is our Magisk patched image for our boot image. I'm just going to cut it. I'm going to go back to my desktop or my downloads folders, Odin One Pro rooting, and I'm going to paste it in here. Now, I'm going to open up PowerShell again. We're going to type in dot forward slash ADB reboot fast boot. All right, now we're in our bootloader or our fast boot mode. What we're going to do here is we're going to go fast boot flash boot underscore B. Now I'm going to put this on this side and I'm going to put this on this side, which is our folder. Now go back into here, make sure there's a space here. So fast boot flash. We're going to drag this right here. Click enter. And now we have successfully flashed our patched boot image. And the next thing we're going to do is go forward slash fast boot reboot. Now we're going to swipe up. You can click file transfer again if you'd like. Now go to root checker pro. Click verify root. Now the super user request has popped up. Click grant. Congratulations. You have successfully rooted your Odin one pro. Now the next thing you need to do is click home. You need to go back into Magisk so that it can set up the additional requirements. So click OK. And it's going to reboot the device automatically. So just let it do its thing and wait for it to reboot. And there it goes. Now that's about it on how to root your Odin One Pro. What you do after you root it is all up to you. There are multiple things you can do with a rooted device, like loading scripts for external virtual memory. You can change the boot image if you want. You can navigate to files that you don't normally have access to for games and saves and everything like Minecraft, for example, or even games that are 
uh, games that save all your data to a hidden folder. There's multiple different things you can do with rooting in the gaming world, not just, you know, accessing secret files and stuff. I'm going to flash a boot image on this and show you guys that as well. It's pretty cool to actually be able to change the boot image to something that you want it to be. Otherwise, I hope you guys don't forget to like and subscribe and like this sort of content because I shared rooting of the Odin 2 Pro or the Odin 2 Max and Pro and base model. And now I had requested for the Odin 1 Pro. So I decided to deep dive into how to do it. And it was pretty straightforward and easy. And I hope it was easy for you. Have a nice day, guys. Enjoy your now fully rooted Odin 1 Pro. I think the next thing you should do is just run a script file to add some virtual memory. Just a tip. Have a nice day. See you next time. Still rooted.